Emily, you about, oh, you just went in, never mind. It was magic. Yeah, I'm got you. All right, when I hit play here in just a second, so listen to my video um, instruction, I don't finish it, so I've got to add some more at the end. There were actually three things that happened to that from the parent function. Most everybody, as I was glancing through the numbers, found two things. You counted how many it went left and went down. Most everybody did pretty good on that. There's another one. I don't remember seeing if anybody typed it. I'll have to double check. Did anybody see the third thing that happened? I can give you a hint. I'll talk about it after the video. It has to do with that thing. What is that? We talked about that yesterday when something was out in front of it. What did that do to it? I stretched it. So there's actually two things. I'll leave stretch off of the video. I'll add it on on the end. But let's watch the explanation there. Well, I told you the answer in that when I gave you the equation for the graph. It says f of x equals 2 times the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 8. So this graph belongs to the absolute value family. Okay? Gave it away there with the sharp V shape. The V graph is an absolute value graph. How is that different from its parent function? Well, it's shifted. If its vertex is here, that's shifted from the origin to the left 2. And then it's shifted down 8. So it is translated left two units and down eight units. Okay, and then we would also say that that two in front of it, two is greater than one, which means it's a stretch. So it would also have been stretched vertically. I'm emphasizing the vertically on that because today we're going to add in horizontal stretches as well. So it would also have been stretched vertically by a factor of two. Okay, now... What we did yesterday is the same stuff we're going to do today, but we're going to look at it differently. Yesterday, we graphed them and compared the graphs. Today, I'm just going to give you the function, the equation, and we're going to change the equations and compare the equations, okay? So, I'm going to try to stay consistent and start you off with the rules, and then we'll apply it to the problem. So, my first rules that we're going to discuss here have to do with horizontal translations and vertical translations. Oops, started to write vertical again. I need to write translation. Now, first off, remember in your geometry words, what's the uh, simple definition of a translation? Maybe it was all right on that. It's a slide. Okay, so that's what we're going to be dealing with first off is just our simple slides. Okay, not very difficult. If I am in my horizontal translation over there on the left and I've got just the plain old equation of y equals f of x and I want to translate that horizontally, horizontally means sideways, which has to do with the x-axis. So I'm going to change the x. So the horizontal translation would say y equals f of x minus h. Okay, y and h, just because I chose one, it could have been anything there, uh, will actually be a number. We're scooting at 5 or 10 or 27 or whatever. I just chose h to stand for a number. What's important, we discussed it yesterday, when we're dealing with horizontal, that's the x's. x is confused. They go the opposite direction. Remember that? So if it says plus, it's actually moving it to the left. If it says minus, it's actually moving it to the right. My ex is awkward. <laughs> that was funny, Abby. I don't think everybody gets it, but I did. It was funny. That's how I remember that. So my ex is awkward. To my vertical translations now, vertical means up and down, which means y, so we don't want to mess the x up at all on this. It's just going to be stuck out on the end. So if my original function says f of x, and I want to translate that vertically, I'm just going to have my translation either added or subtracted on the end. Uh, I chose a k there. So, But this one, the y's, they got their signs right. If it says plus, you take it up. If it says minus, you take it down. Okay. 
And I could, and I'm going to get real fancy here and put it all together in the middle down there for you. I wanted to put a horizontal and vertical translation all in one. I'm going to take my horizontal, f of x minus h, and here comes my vertical piece. I just did it all in one on that one. Isn't that something? This would go, see, minus, where the x means right, so this would go to the right h and up k. So that one would go two times. Looks confusing there with the H and the K's. Don't worry, we'll put some numbers and make some connections. This is actually... Eight, eight, X minus K, or eight. H, X minus H, yes sir. That looks like hieroglyphics, doesn't it? If I had a function that said f of x equals 2x plus 1. Okay, before I jump in head first with this today's work related to yesterday's, which family does that belong to? Um, uh, constant, linear. Linear, very good. Linear, because it's got a, another letter on the right side, so it would be linear. It's not quadratic because it's not squared. It's not absolute value because it don't have the bars, so it is linear. All right, we're going to take that function, and let's write a new function that translates it three units down. So this is going to be easy. I want to translate it three units down. First thing, and this is just kind of like a little housekeeping chore. First thing you got to do is decide what you're going to name your new function, because this one's called f of x. We can't call the new one f of x because we're changing it. So pick another letter. I've just been staying alphabetical all day, and so I chose G. Doesn't matter. Just pick another letter. All right, so down. That's vertical. Does vertical mess up the X, or does it just get stuck on the end? Stuck on the end. So I'm going down. Does that do the opposite sign or the right sign? The right one. When it's up and down, it stays like it is. So down would be minus 3. Okay, I just stuck that minus 3 on the end. Didn't affect the x at all. That's good, but it's not finished because you can clean that up. What's the easy cleanup step? Um, then you just make that negative 3. Yeah. G of x equals 2x minus 2. And I think you probably could have jumped a step there and just known that 1 minus 3 was negative 2, right? So that'd be it. Nothing to that. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, let's take that same function. Holler at me if you need assistance. Let's take that same function, 2x plus 1, and this time let's move it two units to the left. So we're going to take it to the left two times. Make sure you want to do that song. To the left, to the left. Two units to the left. All right, issues with this. To the left, does that just get stuck on the end or does that mess up the X? Messes, messes up the X, so I'm going to only affect the X on this. So let's get it a new name. I'll go H of X this time. Now this 2 that's part of the original, I'm just going to bring it down. Didn't mess it up. But now this 2 that I'm moving it, got to get in here with the X. I'm moving it to the left. So am I going to add to or subtract to? Add. add. Remember, x is opposite. So left, I'm going to add to. And then I still got that plus 1 stuck on the end. We didn't mess it up. Come in. Look at you. Look at me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good. Yeah, I had to bring the boss up. Uh, just somebody's going to keep you in line. Did I, did I get those last two that I asked on there or not? It's okay. I did. Yes. Oh, I did. Uh, I was keeping my fingers crossed. I, uh, I appreciate it. No Thank you. Hey, uh, let me know with all this humidity. It's a little weird. Okay. So if some of them start breaking apart or something like that, I'll replace it. Okay. Appreciate that. I'll let you know. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank all right. So we stuck the plus one out there on the end. Uh, looks good, but you're not down. There's there's a couple cleanup steps here. What do you see that you can do to some basic math to clean this thing up? 
Okay, Abby knew that because she distributed that too. So that makes that a 2x plus 4, and then we still have a plus 1. So what's the last thing? That's it. Well, it's been, I would like to. The, the weather's got to be a little bit more cooperative. Got a rainy first week and so forth. Yeah. All right, let me see if you can do some of that all by yourself now. I'll give you that before we move on to the next step. If I had f of x equals 4x minus 9. Okay, first thing I want you to do is I want you to give me a new function, I'll name it g of x, where you scoot that 5 units up. Okay, then after that, I'm going to take the same function, f of x equals 4x minus 9. I want you to give me a new function, h of x, where you scoot that 1 unit to the right. Okay. Talk to your table buddy if you need some help. Somebody around you, see what you can do. Another second. All right, on the first one, I want to scoot that up five. Up five, do I add five or subtract five? Add. Up and down, do what it says. It's got the signs right. Up means add, so you're going to add five. Do I add that five in with the X or on the end? On the end. The up and down just gets added on the end. So I would say 4x minus 9 plus 5. Skip that step if you can. Now i got to finish it up. Negative 9 plus 5, which gets me a 4x minus 4. How'd you do? Are you out on that one? Fairly easy there. Okay, on number 2 over there on the right, I'm scooting it right 1. If I move it right 1, do I add 1 or subtract 1? Subtract, good, because its signs are backwards, so I'm subtracting one. Do I subtract it from the N or from the X? From the X. So it's going to be, this is where people get confused. Leave your 4 like it is. Just subtract the 1 from the X. Okay? Now what do you have to do to get it where it needs to be? Sure you, good. So it'll give me 
4x minus 4. I still got a minus 9, so combine those like terms. Did y'all do okay with the negatives? Other classes forgot what to do with negative 4 minus 9. How'd y'all do? What's negative 4 minus 9? Negative 13. Negative 13. Good. Oh, yeah, that'll mess you up. But you get it now, right? All right. So we did uh, reflections yesterday. We're gonna look at bless you. We're gonna look at some more reflections again today. Yesterday we only reflected on the x-axis. Okay. If I'm reflecting, here's my x and y-axis. My x-axis is the horizontal one. So if I'm reflecting over that, that means if something's up here, it would reflect down to here. Right? That was our reflection on the x-axis. And all we did on that was put a negative out in front of the whole thing. We looked at that yesterday. Today we're also going to add reflecting over the y-axis. And it's a little bit different. Y-axis is that one. So if I'm here like I was there, but I reflect over the y-axis, where is it going to be? Over there, right? Which means that when I reflected over the y-axis, it was actually the x that got messed up. Because I scooted it to the side, kind of, didn't I? Okay, so that's going to be a little bit different. So let's make a note about how we're going to reflect these things. We're going to have a reflection in the x-axis. And a reflection in the y-axis. Okay, when I'm reflected in the x-axis, and we did this one yesterday, this is what I said. If I just started off with a plano y equals f of x function, its reflection would just be to throw a negative in front of the whole thing. And we looked at that yesterday. That's what flipped it upside down. Okay, but if I'm going to reflect in the y-axis, if it starts off with y equals f of x, the negative, bless you, is going to just go in there with the x. See, we put the negative in a different spot. you off with another linear one for an example on this and then we'll work our way up to an absolute value because the absolute value ones get a little bit trickier so we'll let you keep jotting that and then we'll go in linear and work our way up plus 2 and I want to do a reflection in the x-axis. So my main first question is if I'm doing a reflection in the x-axis, where does the negative go? Just with the x or in front of the whole thing? What? In front of the whole thing. That's what we did yesterday. It was in front of the whole thing. Good job. But basically, so I'm going to say g of x equals put a negative in front of the whole thing. Okay? Now, that's not a bad answer, but I'm going to clean that up a little bit. What is a negative out here in the whole front of the whole thing the same as? A negative what? One. one. So don't I just need to distribute a negative one to that? And when I distribute a negative one to that, doesn't that just change the signs? Right? So that's going to give me g of x equals 5x minus 2. And that's it. You reflected that across the x-axis. Now make a common sense connection. Compare that to the original. Signs are different. Right? It's the only thing. But that was the door off. Okay, let's take that same one now. f of x is negative 5x plus 2. And let's reflect it or about in the y-axis. Okay, our y-axis was different. When we reflected it on the y-axis, we just put the negative with the variable, with the x. Okay, so that's going to look like 
h of x is uh, negative 5, doesn't change, but the x has to get at the opposite sign. And the 2 doesn't change. How does that clean up? That's an easy one. What's negative 5 times negative x? 5x. So it just turns into, come in, turns into that. go to an absolute value family. So let's take f of x equals absolute value of x plus 3 plus 1. So first thing we'll do is reflect it about the x-axis again. REF up there for reflect. Reflect it about the x-axis. Reflect it on the x-axis. What do I do with my negative? In front of the whole thing or just the variable? Whole thing. That's going to look funny to you here the way I'm going to write this, so follow me on this. I'm to put a negative in front of the whole thing. So I'm going to put my negative, and then to make sure I know it's in front of the whole thing, I'm going to parentheses. Like that. Okay? Only reason I do that is if I didn't put the parentheses, I might get confused and think that negative is just with the absolute value. So to make sure I remember it goes to the whole thing, I put the whole thing in parentheses. Okay? Now, just like you said earlier, that negative out front means a negative 1, so we need to distribute it. But slow down before you distribute it without me, because this is different. When I distribute a negative to that absolute value, absolute values can't get busted apart. They have to stay intact in there, and so I'm not going to go and make that a negative x and a negative 3. That doesn't make sense mathematically anyway to have a negative inside there, does it? Because absolute values are positive, right? It's with a variable anyway. The variable doesn't make sense. So, when I distribute that negative 1 there, it's just going to stay out in front of it. Because that tells me I'm going to simplify what's in here, and then don't forget, you got to make it the opposite. Okay? But then I also put it in parentheses to not forget about the 1. I do distribute it to that 1. Negative 1 times positive 1 makes that a negative 1. Bada bing, bada boom. Compare that to the original. Sign inside the absolute value state, all the rest of them change. You see it? Not too bad. Alright. Now when when people, the, the few that did get confused, this is where it happens. So stay with me here. We're going to take that same one, f of x equals absolute value of x plus 3 plus 1, and we're going to reflect it on the y-axis. And we did this linear, and you did great. So you're going to do great here with absolute value. Reflected about the y-axis. All right, when we reflect it on the y-axis, where does the negative go? In front of the whole thing or just the variable? variable. Just the variable. So that's going to say, what am I on, h now? h of x is equal to absolute value of negative, negative x plus 3 plus 1. Okay, I just put it in front of the x. I would like to say Circle it, good job, but I can't. That's not mathematically correct. I just hinted about that on the last one. It's not mathematically correct to have a negative variable inside the absolute value. So we've got to factor out a negative. How can you always, we just need to change its sign, so keep it simple. How can you always change the sign of anything? Multiply it by the Multiply or divide it by negative 1. Right? That'll change the signs of anything all the time, right? So I want to take what's in here, multiply it by negative 1. So that's just going to make that be a positive x and a negative 3. No, we didn't change the back side, so don't change it there. And that's it. 
you're done. Circle that. Now, I can't co uh, in good conscience leave you with that without showing you how that works mathematically. That step, I just kind of waved my magic wand and made it happen. If I take a negative 1 out of this absolute value up here, that would mean this would be the same as absolute value of negative 1 times and then negative by, by negative is a positive, positive by, by negative is a negative. So why here did I write that negative one I took out, but I didn't put it down here in my answer? What is the absolute value of negative one? One. And what is one times anything? What you started with. It didn't change it, did it? Seven times one is seven. So I don't have to write here that I'm multiplying by one because that doesn't change it. So that's why I was able just to leave it off and change the signs. Okay, now look at that thing. Compare it to the original. Try to make some common sense connections. Sign inside. That's the only thing different in it. So can we just... Yep. Yep, I'm all for that. Yep. All right. Alright. Let's talk about some stretches and shrinks. I'm going to give you a horizontal stretch and shrink. Don't need a ton of room on these. And then a vertical. We did vertical yesterday, but we're reviewing it with this. Let's do vertical. I wrote it on the bottom, but let's do it first since we did it yesterday. We said that a vertical stretch happens when our factor is greater than 1. That's from yesterday. We said a vertical shrink happens when our factor is less than 1. Okay, that was stuff that we looked at yesterday. And that factor, sometimes you'll see that mathematically, they'll put an A. So if I want to put a little A over there, whatever. Now, what's different with the horizontal? That vertical, like on the bell ringer, that two that was on the bell ringer, that vertical stretch or shrink goes out in front of the whole thing. Okay, so it'll be in front of the whole thing. So maybe y equals a times the absolute value of x plus two. It's in front of that whole thing, right? I just made that problem up, so don't let that confuse you. Up here on the horizontal, there's two differences. One difference is that the, the factor just goes in front of the letter. It's not in front of the whole thing, it's just in front of the letter. Other difference is we do the reciprocal. So instead of an A, the reciprocal would be 1 over A. So if it tells us to do a horizontal stretch of 3, what's the reciprocal of 3? One third. One third. So horizontal, make you a note up there that 1 over A. If you need to, oh, that got bad. Let me fix that. If you need to, I'll try to help you spell reciprocal. I'm a poor speller. If you need to uh, write reciprocal, reciprocal, maybe. Take the reciprocal when you're doing horizontal. Vertical goes in front of the whole thing. Horizontal just goes in front of the variable. Okay, so let's try. Y'all are doing good. If I had um, f of x equals absolute value of x minus 3 minus 5. First thing I want to do on this is make a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 third. Oh, let me go back to your note page. I didn't write this. This stuff appears the same as down here. It's a stretch if it's greater than 1 and it's a shrink if it's less than 1. Okay, so if you want to add that on there, that part's the same. So here, oops, one there. Here I told you I was doing a horizontal shrink of one third. I don't really have to say shrink, right? Because I know one third's less than one. Okay, so a horizontal shrink of one third. All right, horizontal. Does that go in front of the whole thing or just the variable? Variable, just the variable. Okay, make you a note. Horizontal goes in front of just the variable. When I do horizontal. Do I take the factor like it is, or do I flip it? Reciprocal or not? Reciprocal. Very good. So this says one-third, which means I'm actually going to use three. So I'm going to say g of x. It only goes in front of the variable. That's 
that's it. Why'd I do three? That's the reciprocal of one third. I flipped one third. Why'd I put it just in front of the X? Because that's what horizontal does. So in my feeble thinking, that's the only difficult part of this is knowing when it goes in front of the whole thing, when it goes just with the variable. Because that's been consistent throughout. All of these transformations, some of them's been the whole thing, some of them's been on the end, some of them's been the variable. That's the difficult part is deciphering when it goes to what. And that's why your notes are going to be important to you so you can go back and reflect over those. I said reflect and we're doing reflections. That actually went to stretches. Dang it. Should have used that all right, same function. F. Okay. F of x equals x minus absolute value of x minus three minus five. Let's make this one a vertical. Since we just did horizontal, a uh, vertical stretch by a factor of two. Okay, and we know it's stretch because 2 is greater than 1. Vertical. When I stretch or shrink vertically, in front of the whole thing or just the variable? Whole thing. Reciprocal or not? No. Not. So h of x is equal to 2. Now I'm parenthesizing again because I'm whole thing. Alright, so 2 outside means you're fixing to distribute. But like we said earlier, when we distribute to that absolute value piece, you don't bust it up. Leave the absolute value piece intact. So when I distribute to that absolute value piece, it's still just going to stay out in front of the absolute value piece. Okay? But then you just don't forget your negative 5 back there. Bam. Nothing to it. So much compared to geometry. You and me both, sister. I had my, my high school geometry teacher. It was, it was a hard situation because I was very good friends with her daughter. She was as crazy as they came. In the very first day of school, high school geometry, she got she had more running room than me. She got the very back of the room, spread to the front of the room, threw herself on the wall, like slammed the wall, and screamed, This is a plane. And then after I'm like those scared to death, she started walking around the room doing this. See it? See it? There it is. Right there. Right there. All in like swatting mats. Points. Points. They're everywhere. I was like scared to death. <laughs> That's the craziest teacher I ever had. I can't imagine this here. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the, the teacher's daughter's like, so how's my mom's class? And like, my mom whacked. She was like, <laughs> Anyway. I mean, I'm sure that's what y'all said when I was wearing floating too, so it, it all works out. No, I was so used well, to seeing you that last year <laughs> that it was just like, yeah. That's when I, when I was standing in the hall, that's, the people that knew me were like, well, she's doing it again. <laughs> Wasn't that a big deal? All right. Now, y'all, um, we made that through a little bit quicker than what we've done. If you look up here, let me reflect on what we, what we, our goal was today. Morning classes, we didn't get past here. That's why I drew my dotted line there to remind myself. With y'all, we did translations and reflections. We did stretches and shrinks. So next is combining it all together. Okay, morning classes did not get that far, so I'm keeping y'all all together. So tomorrow, what we got to look at, combining it all together, and those, y'all are quiet because you're the after lunch taking that group, so I'm not real sure about all y'all, but some second, third period need more help here. Fourth period got it okay. I think maybe y'all got it okay when you're awake, but we'll, we'll review that some tomorrow and then do this one as well. Okay, so review over tomorrow. Is that all right? Y'all, we got there a little bit earlier than they did, which is weird, but, so you got a little bit extra time. So we'll pick up on that tomorrow. Good job.